But let's, let's move on. Our third uh, speaker, uh, Austin Jakobsen from Norway. Um, again, you've read the official biography. I can only add one uh, extra item, um, which is apparently, I'm not sure this is information that really we need to know, but apparently um, his uh, commitment to open data in government and beyond originates in a, in a misspent youth playing underwater rugby, which is such a secret sport, I didn't even know it existed. Um, but apparently all the action takes place out of sight underwater, but it's brutal. And it creates individuals uh, like Oystein, who's gonna come and talk. Right, I'm going to talk about something called open product data. It is not uh, an established term yet. I hope it will be. I have taken the liberty of using a certain person's uh, expression, the raw data now. That person is Tim Berners-Lee. He spoke about it in 2009, referring to government data. He said that if the raw data about how governments work and it was fully and publicly available, we could do wondrous things with it. And we have. The open data movement as such has flourished. We have uh, a data.norge.anu, data.something France, gov UK, all over the place, all in the last few years. What is missing is product data, from my perspective. What I mean by that is any data that can be used to describe a product or a service. Some information is already publicly available. By that I mean uh, whether or not a company has been uh, reported uh, doing health offenses. Some of this product information is available on the item itself through labeling. It's available on the shelf as a price. And there are laws saying that if there is information on environments like uh, the mobile stations uh, in a mobile network, that should be released. And that has been the case in Norway where uh, a news uh, a TV organization sued the telecom operator in Norway and got the total map of all, where all the stations are placed for environmental reasons. The problem is that this information is often not available as open and structured data or simply not available at all. I'm going to say a little bit about why it is important that we have it. It can be summed up in two words, asymmetrical information. Some really smart people has described this, and Hal, if you were here, could just do a much better job than me to describe what it is. It is basically when you have two parts in a transaction, and one part knows more about something than the other one. That affects the price, and it affects uh, whether or not the transaction would take place at all. An example of that is if you were to buy a house, and the salesperson would say, this is a fantastic house. It just happens to leave out the part about the rot or the wiring in the house. It could be that, but it could also be someone trying to portray this pork chop as being fantastic and all the pigs are being treated nicely, whereas they truly come from a factory farm under rather unsavory conditions. And this leads to a number of questions which are near impossible for the consumer to get answers to. What are the conditions for the person that made the shirt? That's something that people sometimes would like to know. Were any animals hurt making this shampoo? Will this salad dressing kill me? Uh, are there GMOs in this pizza? Where do the tomatoes come from? Is this company a nice company or not? Uh, or where, where is the cheapest TV? Online services have made it easier for people to make price comparisons on some things, like computers. But if I stand, I'm, I'm going to buy a bicycle, and 200 meters up the street, the same bicycle, is, is, same bicycle is on sale. That information is not available to me in a way that I can use. The way to solve this is to use this, a distributed information system. We take the raw data about everything, as much as possible. You make it publicly available. And separate from that, you apply interpretations. What is good, what is bad? Someone will have an opinion on what is healthy, someone else would have another opinion. But it's up to me as a user to choose who I trust and what inter interpretation I want to use 
on that data. Separate from that again, you have an interface. It could be a web page, or a plugin in a browser, or a mobile application, whatever. And uh, my organization informed individual, we made a barcode scanner. Anyone who wants to can see it in action. So you scan the barcode of something, you get the product with uh, who made it and uh, a little image, and uh, you can get more details where you have opinions on the product, like trusted third parties, uh, lactose intolerance, or Rainforest Foundation have an opinion on either the product or a component or the company or any kind of element linked to that a factory. And you see that. You see the entire life story. It could be ingredients, any, anything that the interface want to portray. And just with a limited data set, this is just some data. It could be anything. We can make any kind of service. This is one we experimented with. Uh, if you have the position of all stores and their inventory and some basic product information, you could get a map of which area should I go shopping? Or what's the status of this store? What is it doing for the local community? Is it, yeah. So in order to get this data, because not all companies want to release, they didn't want to tell us how this shirt was made. We made a petition, the informed individual organization made a petition where we demand that relevant data, and by that we mean data that can be used to, uh, for, for consumers to make better informed choices, uh, associated with goods and services, anything, anything you pay money for, to be made publicly available. And we even shape that by publicly available, we mean by, we mean open structured data, API-based access, bulk transfers, very specific. And this petition has been signed by a number of organizations in Norway. Uh, animal rights, environments, health, consumer rights, uh, agriculture, this is, is not a data issue. This is not a nerdy issue. This is a societal issue. Questions that have left, been left unanswered for too long. So what I have done is to try to get cooperation from companies, sort of the carrot approach. Uh, these, or, these, are these are companies which have helped us, but their Coop, for instance, is one of the largest uh, grocery chains in Norway, but they're owned by the members, so it's like a, an NGO more than a company. The same with Kultura Bank, it's a company, but it's, it has a, a clause saying that all profits should go for beneficial stuff. Stonebag is a clothing manufacturer, but they, they release the entire life story of everything they make. Great, great company. So we have some cooperation. We also launched, or we will launch a website called OP data, openproductdata.org, which will be like uh, data.gov just for product data. One for each country where it's, anyone can go in and list, oh, I have this data set about nutrition or whatever, and uh, this is how you access it. So that people like me can come in and uh, use that data for services. What I need is help from politicians to either to go to companies and offer incentives. Like, if you publish this data, it will be nice to you fund programs, like mine, or whatever, to make data more structured, standardized, available, or to use the whip. Sometimes, some companies, they're not gonna give away this data no matter how much you try to call them and lure them. So you need to either enforce whatever laws are already there, or make new ones, plain and simple. Uh, that was my message.